Uh, uh, they're similar. I think he's a little different. Yeah, I can't like, I mean, like 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 like
Yeah, I'm doing At least muted it, if not playing ads. Two, turn it over four.
It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm Bob Lovell. This is our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. And Paul, here we are. High school football championships, as we talked about a year ago, uh, most of the games were played. And again, it's an amazing accomplishment for all of these teams to be where they are and for you and the, and the membership of the IHSAA 
It has been a fantastic fall sports season, culminating, obviously, in the championships at Lucas Oil Stadium. It has been, Bob. You know, it's just you, you, you learn to be thankful for what we have through COVID. And, you know, you're thankful for health and you're thankful for, for being able to spend time with friends. And we've learned to be thankful about the, the time-honored tradition of participation in high school athletics. And, you know, and that's just what it just makes me just makes me smile and be a little sentimental, to be honest with you, about the fact that here we are. We get to do this. Kids get an opportunity to celebrate a state championship uh, or a runner up uh, in front of their hometown crowd in a venue like Lucas Oil Stadium with a partner like the Colts. Well, it's really, it brings to bear, I think, a point that we lose sight of. You truly don't know what you have until you lose it. And then last year, we didn't have fans, we didn't have the opportunity for fans to really be there. And, and it was a major, major impact because. You know, the concept of Friday Night Lights, we all understand it. It's real. It's extremely important. But it, it is made better by the involvement of communities and everybody in the schools. And there's there's nothing like it, quite frankly. There isn't. It, you know, and, I, you know, there's nothing like it even in other states. I mean, Indiana is such a special place um, with the, the you know, <laughs> I, I – I told somebody recently, they asked how we were able to do what we do in Indiana. And I said, well, I said, you don't have a governor who played high school basketball in the state of Indiana. And, you know, from the from the governor's office to Dr. Box to Dr. Katie Jenner to our schools, you I mean, it's just a, it's a team thing and it's a team effort. And and, you know, that's why we have an opportunity to celebrate the state championship this weekend for kids in the communities. I like to say, Paul, the reason is only in Indiana. That's (laughs) right. That's right. It it boils down to we're different when it comes to these kinds of things. And and we are unique in so many things about what we do in terms of high school sports, starting with the Champions Network and uh, Indiana Sports Talk and all the other things. But you don't have that replicated in other sports, and I'm not sure you can. No, I agree with that. You know, I just saw a number yesterday. Our Champions Network on the radio side has expanded to 64 stations across the state of Indiana. We've grown over 20 stations in the last five years uh, in our network. And, uh, you know, I, I don't you, – you, you don't speak about growth in a lot of formats. But our, prov- no. our product and in, in kids' sport is so important that, that stations all across Indiana – want to hear what we have to say, but want to be able to support kids and participation. Finals Friday, Saturday, uh, you have some interesting matchups. I think what's cool about it is we have some teams that fought for championships a year ago, and yet we also have some teams who've never been here before and have great stories. And so there are a whole lot of storylines coming up this weekend. There is. You know, we have three schools uh, that traditionally have very strong athletic programs, but they've never been to the state finals in football. And, you know, that comes a different level of excitement with the community. And those communities, they sign somebody to stay back home and turn the lights off when the last one leaves because they all they all come out. But then, you know, the Center Grove crowd and the Cathedral crowd love their football and, and they show up to support, too. And so I'm really excited about the atmosphere that we're going to have at uh, Lucas this week, this year. And, you know, the good thing, too coaches that we don't have to we don't have to clear the facility out this year so a fan can come on friday or saturday and watch all three games and it's going to be an action-packed day of football both days thanks for listening to the commissioner's corner with ihsaa commissioner paul neidig and coach bob lovell and thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community
Supreme Court thing is they make sure you definitely take it stands because if you don't do stands, you're going to be a lot of schools. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
This broadcast on the IHSAA Champions Network is copyrighted by the Indiana High School Athletic Association and may not be rebroadcast or retransmitted without the express written consent of the Indiana High School Athletic Association. This is your IHSAA. Welcome, everyone, to the season opener for the Triton Trojans. I'm Andrew Harrell alongside the A-team and Caden Atkins, Kenny Barnhart, and the Hall of Famer O'Reilly. They're here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network as the Trojans head west down US 30 to take on the Oregon Davis Bobcats. These two teams squared off against one another in the sectional semifinal a season ago. Triton was victorious as they headed to the sectional championship and continued their magnificent seven, or their magnificent season all the way to the regional championship. Oregon Davis lost in that game, but Larry Center has been growing this program up here, and his team has, has improved each year. Caden, what kind of thing? You know, Triton had that awesome run last year. Oregon Davis, let's talk about them first with the home team. They lost some key seniors. These guys here... What are we going to look to see from these guys tonight? Uh, look for scrappy play. Uh, we saw it a little bit in the JV. They're going to try to outwork you and out-hustle you, and if they can get that done, then they're going to get some cheap, easy baskets and keep themselves involved in a game that I think a lot of people aren't looking at to be uh, very competitive. But, hey, we know, we've seen it enough that anyone can be competitive on any given night. And these guys here, like you said, Scrappy is the best way to do it. I mean, Larry Center just does a great job of his group. Really played defense well. I mean, in that sectional uh, semifinal game, they played Triton really hard. I mean, they played they played them about as good as you can play them. And, you know, they, they made Triton sweat there in moments. But this is a group that's continued. They did lose a little bit, but they still got some decent players along that roster. Yeah, look for them to force some turnovers. Maybe we'll see a couple travels here early from the Trojans. We saw that a little bit in the scrimmage uh, earlier against Peru. So watch for them to get – get after the Trojans, rattle them a little bit, and try to create some easy turnovers. And for Triton, things are going to look a little bit different. I mean, you're, you don't have that post player. Things are a little bit different. For this team this year, what kind of things are you looking to see from this group? Well, you kind of already touched on it. You're missing you know, John Gardner, who was – he big, did every, that big wing, wingspan. He did everything for you last year. He led the team in rebounds, led the team in blocks. He was up there in steals. So you're missing that key defensive – component who's going to step up and make those plays defensively who's going to get these rebounds these hustle plays that john was able to do so well and i think it starts tonight set, set the tone early and we're going to see who can come out there and ready for ready to perform and obviously with ashton oviedo and tyson each were the two big heavy hitters tyson was the conference mvp ashton obviously is ashton oviedo he's only a handful of points away from thousands from a thousand career points here those two there obviously we know what we're going to see for them it's that next year down, who's going to step up? This is a great group of seniors. You look down there with a Chandler Westaver, uh, Caden Graham, Cole Shively, Bruce Johnson, I mean, Connor Large. These guys here, they play, they've seen varsity minutes. They're, they're a talented group. Who's going to be that that third, fourth, fifth option that's going to come on the bench and really set things up? For me, that guy's going to be Bruce Johnson. I think Bruce is going to be a big player. Cole McKinney, we've seen the things that he can do well. For you, who's that guy that you're kind of looking to see is going to be the big that – that make that leap well i'm going to take the easy way out and i'm going to i'm just going to say it doesn't have to be the same person every no. single time you know you've got those two big hitters up front with ashton and tyson you, when it's your night you know it's your night you got to step up then and i think we're going to see that tonight it might not it might be one guy tonight it might be bruce tonight it might be cole the next game it could be cole shively the game after that you know it just it's going to rotate and i think that triton has done a great job of building this program with a lot of depth and they're going to use that tonight. And I think, like you just said there, depth. That was the, that was the big key last year. You saw him play in that Argus game. What did Gross keep doing? Platoon swap. Go back in. Go back in. He could pull put five different guys on the floor, and they played they played extremely yeah, well. Hockey subs. I mean, I, he was just pulling them all, on and off the court. It was, I mean, if they didn't have to hit the scores table, it might as well have been hockey because those guys were coming off. They, they had certain lines they were running, I mean. But for Coach Groves, that depth is huge. And that's going to be huge going down the going down as far as this team wants to make a run. That's the way you're going to have to do it. That depth, these guys are going to be ready. And I know listening to these guys talk, they've been putting the work in all summer. Well, and another reason that depth is so important, especially when you're a team that doesn't have a traditional five-man, a traditional big down low, you're going to be running the court. You're going to be looking for fast break, you know, threes in transition. And last year, Triton, they shot 37% from three-pointers last year. I think that's a very good percentage for a, a very small high school team. And that's where 33% of their points um, came from, was from beyond, beyond the arc. And, you know, free throws. They got to look to get a little better at free throws this season. We saw that in the JV game earlier today. A little shoddy there, but, you know, 13% of their points came from the free throw line last year on 70% shooting. I know Coach Groves wants that around that 75, 77 range. But 
It all starts tonight. You got to set your tempo for the year tonight. I know it sounds silly. You got a long season ahead of you, but it starts tonight. It starts with this first game. And that's the kind of thing that excitement to kind of push yourself towards. So, I mean, that's what I mean. I think we're going to be in for a good one. I think we're going to be in for a good season. So, with that being said, about a minute before tip off here, the season opener is all set and ready to go. The Trojans and the Bobcats square off next, and we'll have that for you here on the Triton Trojans Sports Network. Thank you. 
Cole Shively, Cole McKinney, Tyson Yates, and Ashton Oviedo. The five out there for the Bobcats is Cameron Taylor, number four, number 12, Lane Fisher, number 22, Connor Danford, number three, Caleb Cease, and number four, the 6'5", big man, Carson Matthew. So Danford and Shively get ready to get this one underway. And you're looking down there, and Oregon Davis... Couple guys, pretty pretty tall down there, Caden. Yeah, man. Both teams are gonna come out here in a defensive tip. Yeah, I didn't realize six five freshman could be trouble for the Trojans down the down the way here. You got a six four junior going up against Cole Shiva, but don't let him fool you. Cole has got some hops. So we get things underway here. And Danford swats it away, but Triton wins the tip, and Cole McKinney he'll get things started. Already coming out in that denying defense, at least on Tyson Yates. As he sits there and gets a and piece of it, Cease is going to take off on the fast break. Up and no good. Oviedo gets the rebound. I think Yates might have got a piece of that one. Oviedo reached out, making sure Fisher didn't get on him. As Shively works back up top to Bruce Johnson, thought about it. Yates with the back door cut, not there. Johnson retreats back up top to Key. Wants to go to Shively, knocked away there by Taylor. And Johnson will foul him on the way to the basket. And they're going to say before the shot. Defensive intensity coming out right away for the Bobcats. If they can continue that all game, that's going to give Triton fits here in the early yeah. goings. Yeah, we touched on it. We, we keyed on it. Turnover is going to be a big issue here. This is a scrappy team. You cannot take them for granted. And they came out and just pressured the Trojans right away. The Trojans were not ready for any of this defense, and it's shown here. Danford up top, looks to Matthew. He'll work against the smaller McKinney, backs him down, but McKinney knocks it away. McKinney stripped him on the way to the basket, pushes it up to Oviedo on the right wing. Oviedo with it now, stops, retreats back, but Danford comes the in, they're going to get him on the reach. And you know, Oregon Davis using that length between Cease and Danford and Fisher, those guys get in there using that length and knocking it away. Yeah, if they can get in the passing lanes and really spread out there, use their whole wingspan, it's going to be real hard for the Trojans to penetrate and attack and dump the ball off like they want to do. Yates receives the inbound. Works it past the half-court line. On over to Shively mm -hmm. on the right wing. Back on top to Johnson. Yates cycles all on the other side. But Cease is staying right with him. Yates tries to dribble drive. Matthew shuts it off. Fade away jumper on its way. And Triton strikes first. Nice move by Tyson Yates to see the big man take up that hole and then use that fadeaway to drop it in. Taylor gets it up past the half-court line, feeds Cease, jumper on the way, ties it. it up. Yates pushing up to Oviedo on the right wing. Stops, resets, Yates now. Works with the screen for McKinney. Hesitation move goes up and finds a way and Beautiful. slithers through Tyson Yates. That was a great hesitation. Just that simple stop, it frees the defense and allows Yates to get right underneath the basket for an easy bucket. And he's a guy that can get fast in a hurry. Danford's three in the corner off the mark, and I believe it went out of bounds on Matthew. And Triton gets it back. And Tyson so well. He moves, he moves through the paint so well, and he's so deceptive. He hits those breaks, frees their bet, but yeah, how he can twist his body and use his movement. He does an extremely good job with that driving. Yeah, you want to talk about someone with a quick step. It, he shows it again right there. There's going to be a foul underneath the basket. And I call that on Carson Matthew, the 6'5 freshman. Yates goes to inbound. Groves calling out the inbound play. Larry Center having a quick word right with the there. official. Shively banks open. Cole Shively's on the board. Triton now is going to go full port pressure look and watching them run this against Peru. Triton runs it extremely well. They like this zone press defense. You can kind of cheat a little bit more as opposed to a man to man uh, press. And I think once the season really gets going, they'll have that rhythm down and be able to get easy buckets right out of that press. Taylor works with the screen left and Yates reaches around and knocks it away. We saw them do that during against Argus and they just, they. Triton, they're, they're, the way they use their hands on defense is just, it's just, 
I can't explain how good it is. It's just great. Taylor's three-point corner, three on the way, no good. And Fisher and, oh. That's going to be, oh, they're going to keep it here. They're going to say it went off as shy. It looked wow. like Fisher may have swatted it down as he was going to the floor. Morgan Davis will keep it. Dan for Dan Bound. Who missed the three, Taylor? Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, Oregon Davis 0 of 2 behind that arc. And Triton yet to take one. Exactly. Something. But they've hit every two. Up to C's close to the half-court line. Fisher up top to Matthew. Knocked away by Oviedo, nice and Triton defense. forces a turnover. Nice job by Oviedo. Oh. But Fisher comes right back. Bruce Johnson heads up play. Oviedo, long range three. Puts it in. Like we said, Oviedo range. Uh, time out for Coach Sinner. I think Ashton can hear us sometimes when we're up here. We're just talking you know, about Triton has not taken a three yet. Not even 30 <laughs> seconds later. later. Oh, yeah. Oviedo's got one. Maybe. I don't see an earpiece or anything <laughs> down there. Surely he's not. It's a little delayed. I think you're just talking real loud, to be honest with you. Well, so, it's noisy in here. So you can pre-talk, and I can't. You can guess what's going to happen and say it, and I can't say anything. That's different. You do it at the wrong time. <laughs> I mean, we all, everybody on that Reds here now can agree. You always say those obvious things at the wrong time. Do you remember the bill? Yes, that was your fault. <laughs> Completely your fault. Oh, man. Tippecanoe Valley a few years ago, that was also you on that one, too. <laughs> oh, it's going to be back. Oh, man. It's good to have the A-team up here. Missed that. Good to have Caden up here. Holiday weekend, but yeah, it's good to have him up here with us. He's still a big part of the broadcast. We have a lot of conversations throughout the week in between games. Well, between me and the brains of the operation in Indianapolis, we try to keep you updated as much as possible. Hey, got to have somebody. It's good to have Kenny back. He's out of the combine now. Yep, the crop's finally in the bin. It's Matthew. Nice move, but a putback oh, wow. by Fisher. Good job to follow up the rebound. Train's basket gotta, there. Train's got to box out. That's two times now in this very early game, I've seen Lane Fisher get an offensive rebound and just a, oh. by attacking, you know, being aggressive and going after those boards. Yates gets control of it somehow. Oviedo dials wrong range again and can't get that one to go. Rebound to Taylor. We're going to get a foul on the board. And, of course, you can't forget the Hall of Famer over there. I mean, he's just, he's just everywhere. Consistently good. Other than when he talks at late <laughs> moments in games that he's not supposed to. <laughs> Fisher to inbound. And your team to substitute just yet. Fisher pushes oh, up to see. Puts on the ground and tries to feed it. But I think we're going to get a foul call. Coming on Shively, I believe. And it is. That's Triton's third team foul. So Shively, Johnson, and Yates. Yates all have a single. Cease. That was a smart move there to let that ball just drop. Didn't try to get it on the inbound. Fisher waits for it. Jumper's on its way off the side iron. No good rebound to Cole Shively. Yates now in transition, looking down court. Finds McKinney, oh. but too oh. tall yep. for McKinney. He tried to corral it. Had Bruce Johnson here on this uh, right corner, but I I like that pass. I like Being I, aggressive, going after, going towards the basket as opposed to sideways. Good trap Taylor. here in the. Cease now, two-point jumpers on its way off the mark. Rebound, Shively's fighting for it. Scrappy. But Oregon Davis, there it is, that scrappy defense, or that scrappy play as Fisher, three-pointer off the mark, and Cole McKinney gets the big defensive rebound and a foul coming on Oregon Davis. Caden Graham looks to check in. It's a new Trojan. That is a new Trojan. Come in for Johnson. That's going to give the Trojans a little bit of height to down low. I imagine he is going to be switched, substituted on to guarding Matthew on the defensive side. And you know, Cade moves the floor pretty good. He, he moves the perimeter extremely well. He, and he, he can shoot. There, it, there's, there's another shooter for you. He plays like a guard. You know, he's just a, a real tall guard. And with what Triton's looking to do this year, that's what they needed. Oviedo calls for the screen. He'll drive against. Travel. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. As he was trying to drive there. Coach Groves saying he's getting bumped the whole way down there. Yeah, Matthew. The looks aren't having any of it tonight. Cease now. Works up. They're going to call a travel call on him. A turn around. Turn it over. Try with four turnovers and three for Oregon Davis by our count. I'm going to say it's nice having someone run the stack computer, not trying to do it <laughs> and, and trying to talk at the same time. Just saying. 
I never appreciated that until this year. Yates now brings it up, works with the screen left. Pull it straight away, jumper on the way. Oh, Three-pointers off the mark. As Matthew gets the rebound, Fisher now in transition. Euro step up, up and in, no good. Rebound Cole Shiland. He'll get fouled on the rebound by Matthew. Yep. Cole Shiland must have been listening to you as the defensive rebounds kind of stepped up in these last couple possessions. Boxing so, out, man. So Matthew's going to pick up his second. So getting two of them here in that first quarter could be a uh, little gonna, issue down in the game. They're going to keep him in there. Only four subs on the bench. Graham will just pull up into the elbow jumper off the mark. Danford with the rebound. Taylor past the half court line. Center calling out the offensive play. Taylor will let it take shape. Pushes Matthew back. Looks like they want to, yep. Feed right here. Free throw wing extend, or free throw line extended. Now they're going to run into it. He Just looking for through. something to develop. You know, chew that clock against a team who can run like the Trojans, and we're going to see it right here. Yates up, no good. Shiley and Caden Graham with a put back, no good, and a foul call. And a call on Triton. And a call on Cole McKinney, a push on the rebound. Triton right there, a couple chances to put that one back up in. It was a good. I mean, Yates tipped it to Oviedo, but Yates got he got down the court in a hurry, just couldn't quite finish. 1-3-1 one, one defense coming. Let's see if OD recognizes it, gets in there 2-1-2. Two, two. And that's going to be a foul on Graham. But going back to that possession before, Triton's got to have that bucket there. You have two opportunities. One of those has to be converted. I understand it's tough underneath the basket, but. And Coach Groves saying down there, say, hey, that right there, he said, they're pushing my guy way, they're, patient, they're pushing my kids way worse down here on the, down in the paint. And he's like, you didn't call that. I think, I think that's a good conversation down there to try to get your way there. Missing somebody. Danford goes to Taylor now. He'll drive, penetrates against McKinney, and a travel call as McKinney. Yeah, made and made. Yates going to bring it up now for the Trojans. Signals McKinney away. And against a team that's going to be up and denying you, you've got to be able to back cut your guys. And McKinney going to let it go. In and Head out back there. by Graham. Nice job by Graham to time that. And that's going to be very valuable. If he can continue to do that, that's going to be a big, huge asset for what the uh, Trojans. Danford hits a three Bingo. from the corner. That's a great pass by Fisher. I mean, I thought he was going up with the shot. David will find the open man in the corner. Screen by McKinney, frees up Yates. He'll find his way through the lane, up and fouled on the way through. He'll go to the line for two. And a call on Danford. His second also. Team's fifth, both teams with five team fouls. As Triton takes their first trip of the season to the free throw line, it's Tyson Yates. Yates last year, 71% from the line. He's going to start out 101. Gets the first one to go. Cole Shively going to check out, as well as Cole McKinney. Bruce Johnson checks back in, and Chandler Westifer seeing his first action of the season. Yates perfect on that trip. A minute and a half to go here in the first quarter. Danford past the half court line, works it back to Taylor here on the near side. Finds Matthew top the key, tries to feed him down low, but Wester with a nice hands knocks it away. Yeah, Wester did touch that. Nice back cut. Oh, you, you, both teams are cutting extremely well here tonight. Haynes says we got to come up with a name when Ashton goes deep. Fisher's three-pointer in the corner, off the mark. C Offensive rebound. Cease with the board. Matthew now with it. He'll drive baseline and stop. And now stay here. Graham will knock it out of bounds. A name for when he shoots his three. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I think Oviedo's pretty good. I mean, that's <laughs> – Oviedo range. I mean, I that's – I mean, that, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, Oviedo range. It's hard to beat it. I don't know, if, I don't know where the concession stand is. He didn't quite <laughs> shoot it from there yet. I, get, I don't remember where it – Cease for three. Side iron no good. Fisher in the lane with the runner up back iron. Touch. That one rolls around, but it goes out of bounds. They're going to say it went off on Fisher. He are trying to argue with the official. Who shot that last one? Cease and Fisher both had a shot okay, on that Fisher. one. Is that was up there a long time for Fisher to get up there. Oregon Davis not going to go with some full court pressure defense. Oviedo brings it up now. 45 seconds to go. Back to Westerford. Oviedo now with it. Top the key working against Fisher. He'll try to drive. That. Right. Got to watch that forearm as I think they'll and call that in this Coach one. Coach Groves is pleading his case for a body as soon as Ashton put that ball on the floor. Puts it on the floor there, loses his dribble. They're going to hold for a last shot. Oviedo taking his time. Gives it to Tyson Yates and he'll set it up. Ten seconds, seconds now. Ashton, no, no. Uh, it appears Ashton doesn't know the play. Oh. That one knocked away by Taylor. Wester <laughs> knocks it right back. Yates at the buzzer oh. off the top of the backboard. That'll stop. I guess the buzzer ain't coming yet. Time. <laughs> it's barring a full court heave here with .3 seconds. Triton's going to lead here at the end of the first. 13-7. Oh. oh, what a kick. Soccer player. Yeah. That'll do it for the first quarter. Triton leads 13-7. Well, Kenny, how many turnovers do we have unofficially for that first quarter? I have five apiece. OD is doing exactly what we thought they were going to do. They're mm -hmm. keeping themselves in it by playing this scrappy defensive. And it's not just on the defensive side they're being scrappy. Offensively, they're getting these offensive rebounds, hustle plays, and that's what's keeping them in the game. Triton can't score if they don't have the ball. And, you know, and, and, that's, and that's one thing. I don't want to say make the game ugly. That's not what they're doing. They're just playing good, old-fashioned, hard-nosed basketball. Like I said, they're, they're, making, they're trying to make Triton play their style of play, and they're slowing them down. But for Triton, you've got to find a way that, I mean, moving the ball, they're moving the ball well, but you've got to find a way to convert those points. Like we saw down here, those two, those two chance chance or two-second chance points couldn't convert. They just seem flustered, you know, and that's it could be uh, first-game jitters, but, you know, they seem out of sync with each other. And we'll see what Coach Groves drew up for him to come out in this second quarter. But he was not very happy on that last possession between the miscommunication of the play and the result of the play. So, Did Oregon Davis have a uh, scrimmage like Triton did with Peru? I don't know. Connor Frazier checking in number 11. They don't put those on. Uh, yeah, they don't, no. they, don't, they don't put that on for you to see. So yeah, to whether they was able to. We'd have to ask somebody. I think all schools do it. Well, you can text text the coach. He'll tell you. Yeah, he's got to get him to answer. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't think he's got his phone in his pocket down there. Frazier Good loses it. And I call a foul. Frazier knew it was on him. Not happy with that one. That'd be the team's sixth foul. His first. So both teams in danger of Sending teams to the bonus for free throws. And very early, too. I mean, the second quarter just started, Dallas. And I mean, that could be, like I said, opening game jitters. Corner. Oviedo with the floater off the front iron. No good. Danford with the rebound. Goes back to Taylor. He'll bring up the floor. Pushing up to Fisher now on the left wing. Got a skip pass. Number 11. Uh, Frazier was open earlier in that possession. OD just missed him. Cease now with it goes up on top to Frazier. He'll drive, kicks out in the corner. Danford with the up fake, pump steps fake. into a two, but I think Bruce Johnson might get a piece of that one. McKinney gets it, looking down, down the floor, finds Johnson. Thought about the two, pulls back wisely, goes back on to Shively. Cole Shively, kick out, Oviedo in the corner for three, puts it in. Beautiful. That's how you want to execute a penetrate and kick. Cole, uh, Cole Shively catches it on the left wing. Pump fakes, puts the ball on the ground. Defense sucks towards the basket because they know Cole Shively, he likes to score the ball, just like all these other Trojans do out there. But when they do that, they leave Oviedo open in the corner. And Cease will draw the foul, and Oviedo will commit it. 
Because that was the only player that was there. Yeah, and he didn't really reach for the ball. He just kind of got in the wrong spot for letting him come down. That'll be the ten, team sixth. So one foul apiece for six players. Cease now. Back iron no good. That's their first free throw attempt of the season. And center. Likes to go, he likes to wander <laughs> on that floor yeah, a little he, way there. He's getting pretty far out there sometimes. Reminds me of another coach we, uh, we'll see later this year. <laughs> and foul on the rebound. It's going to be on Danford, I believe. And now Cole Shively gets to go down no. and shoot for the, shoot the bonus. I apologize. It's on Lane Fisher. His second. So Cole Shively now goes to the line. And Cole Shive, I know he's been putting the work. We saw him play extremely well during the football season. Kid's an athlete, and just there's a lot of things he does extremely well. And you know, like I said, he, he's put in a lot of work over the summer. He's busy. He's, he's busy. busy. Busy guy. Busy bee. Plus the cows. Plus, Plus the, the cows. cows. <laughs> I mean, hey. <laughs> Kenny's on top of it here. I'll tell you what, that'll toughen you up real quick. I, I'm telling you, I, I don't care what anybody says. Breaking livestock makes, I'll tell you, it, it's, a, it's a workout. Shively misses the second after connecting on the first. Does extend the Trojans' lead to 10 points, however. 6.34 to go. OD still held scoreless in this second quarter. Taylor goes in the corner, gets oh, it back, goes wow. the floater, up and no good. Rebound to go, goes to Bruce Johnson. Johnson trying to get it away. Oviedo, no look pass. Woo! McKinney up and in. Ashton Oviedo to McKinney and a timeout for Oregon Davis. Good ball movement, and that all oh, was Bruce Johnson not panicking. Get to Oviedo, really set his player up well. That, 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 was, that was good ball movement. And Triton, they run the floor great. We've seen it so far earlier in this one. They haven't connected every time they ran the floor very well, but you know, that one was the was the exception. And Oviedo just doing what Oviedo does. He's a great scorer, but I think he's an even better passer when he has to be. You know, it, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, I would go vintage Steve Nash just a little bit, just, just watching yeah. the way he runs the floor. I mean, it's just the way he moves. You know, and you could be sitting there, you turn your head, and he does some weird thing with his hand, and that ball is just there. And it, 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 he just reminds me so much of watching style. That's just that style of play. And, you know, and he, find, and he, he sets his teammates up. He, he doesn't put you where the – he puts you where the ball needs to be, where you need to be. He leads his team extremely yeah, he's well. He's expecting you to finish that route, just like a good quarterback like uh, Cole Shively does during the football season. Yep. And all these guys, I mean, do a good job passing. I mean, Tyson Yates sets players up. I mean, these guys here, they know how to they know how to really move the ball well on offense. Fisher now at the basketball for the Bobcats. Patient now. So it looks like they're set here that they're setting up as Fisher's gonna kick that one out of bounds. Um, he's got two options here. Two guys set up at each elbow. And he can choose to run off a screen either side. Or the bottom guys, they're just chasing off each other. And they're running into a dribble handoff set off of that. So interesting thing to look out for. We'll see if we see any variations of that just base set there. So what's to, what's to ever now? Back in, back in the game. As Oviedo gets freed off from the double screen. Hand off from McKinney. Step back for three. Puts Ooh. it in. Ashton Oviedo from beyond the arc. That's his third one from back there. Don't let him get hot. Oregon Davis has to realize that Ash Oviedo is not missing from behind the three-point line. You could be in for a long game. This Danford, but Cole McKinney with the big defensive board, pushing up floor. Johnson, patient, Woo! bank is open. Bruce Johnson right there, a thing of beauty. Cole McKinney led him well. Johnson, patient. It results in two points, and Triton pushing that lead up to 17. Eight set Ooh. check back in. That's going to be a charge. Cole McKinney. We saw him do it last season. Led the team in charges taken last year. Wasn't even close. That kid, I mean, he, he knows he's extremely smart, knows where to put his body, and he knows how much time he's got to get his feet set. Really, his anticipation, those instincts, I mean, it's just off the charts. Yeah, it's almost like a sixth sense to him. So Caden Graham and Connor Large will check in. Saw Connor's brother, Caden perform in the JV game earlier. Played him extremely well. Three-pointer from Shively, puts Woo! it in. Lead up to 20 for the Trojans. They, like I said, they that first quarter was kind of that waking up point. And 
I think the Sleeping Giants awoke here in the second quarter, putting up 14 points. De Oregon Davis yet to score. Matthew with it now, leaves it for Danford on the left wing, works the screen. Caden Graham, nice switch there. On over to Fisher. Matthew has to roll hard off that ball screen earlier in the possession. Oh, beautiful by Fisher. He knew where the defense was going to be and was able to draw that foul. That's a bit of artwork, I tell and, you. And then he kind of lead. I mean, leaning your body out there to really kind of baited Graham into that foul. That was a, that was an impressive move by Fisher. Yeah, nothing Caden Graham could have done. He was just in the wrong place. Fisher was able to be an acrobat a little bit. Oviedo check in for Graham. Graham with those two fouls, he'll set. As Fisher missed the first one. Can't connect on the second one. That one almost tipped in by Matthew. Oviedo. Bring up the floor. On to Shively. Nice jab step by Shively to get freed up. Kick out to Oviedo, trying to use that screen from Yates. He'll get caught on the baseline. Now he gets knocked out of bounds here. by Taylor. Yates goes to inbound. Finds Connor Large in the corner. Yates on the free throw line. Loses it on the dribble. Danford comes away with it. Great job by Danford. Read the floor. Slow down. Wait for your teammates. No call there. As Chandler Westover hit the deck. Trying to take a charge. And jump ball it belongs to the Trojans. I got to remember, there's no possession arrow on the thing. I, I got to look down and see where the light's <laughs> at down here on the scores table. Yeah, I kind of thought Wester may have had position on that one. I like a no call there, though. Oregon Davis did have a scrimmage with Bone Grove. Bone Grove. Boone Grove. Boone Bone Grove. Boone Grove. Grove. Bone Grove. <laughs> <laughs> How about Oviedo? Oviedo? Another one. Ashton Oviedo up to 12 points now. He's trying to extend that lead to 23. Oregon Davis, they're not going away. A timeout for Coach Center as he tries to focus back in his team who started off the game extremely well. Just got to find that rhythm and get back into it. Yeah, Triton, is, they've settled down a little bit, and I think that is the main factor of Oregon Davis's struggles here in the second quarter. They haven't been able to get these um, these scrap plays to go their way in this second quarter. And Triton is doing a great job of capitalizing on opportunities. And that's the thing, the tale of two quarters here. Triton really doing a good job as far as they, they made adjustments. And that's what you want to see a team do, especially a team that has, uh, has a lot of potential. How are they going to adjust? And these guys here had a tough first quarter. I mean, they didn't quite seem in sync. The second quarter, this is a completely different team. Yeah, and if you're able to make adjustments like this on the fly this early in the season, look out because you're going to be able to adapt to some very serious, very high-pressure situations later on in the year. And that's and, that, and that's a dangerous thing, especially for, I mean, for a team that can do that. that that's lethal because some teams that they got to they got to make their adjustments at halftime. They got to call a timeout and switch. Coach Groves is yet to call a timeout. And this team made that made that just quick adjustment. When these guys start having fun and just kind of playing their brand of basketball, they they just they just run the they, they can they can run the tables. Yeah, they once I mean we've seen them getting rid of them this second quarter. Once they started doing that, they just play off each other. They want to see each other succeed, and that's what makes a, a good ball team a great ball team. Matthew with a nice feed, but. Yates with a better defensive play as Taylor knocks it out of bounds. That was a good feed by Matthew up top the key. Big man's got some hand. I mean, he's got some serious passing ability for a big guy. Yates brings it up. No look past Oviedo. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 oh. Everybody realized and everybody knew where to go. Did you see three Oregon Davis players I come saw. out to try to contest that shot? Yates three-pointer straight away. Can't get that one to go. Connor Large trying to back out for the offensive rebound, but Shively with the bank. Shot goes in. Rebound a basket for him. Cole Shively running the inside lane really extremely well there. And great job by Connor Large. He's the one who really set that play up. He's got it tipped up as Matthew going to try a, a shot there. And Taylor with the Taylor putback. Taylor it back. Morgan Davis lifts that lid here in the second quarter. 
So this Oregon Davis team, you know, they had a tough go earlier in the season, but this is a team that got better, and they and they they earned their spot there in that. I mean, that, in that sectional, they played extremely well. This this is a good team. It's going to stay here. Huh. Yates now goes to the inbounds, finds Shively on the left elbow. He'll hand it off. Oviedo gets free up on the double screen on the far side. Three-pointer on the way. Can't get down to go. Wester with the Jam putback. Westifer. Nice play there by the senior. I'm going to have to get used to saying that. Yep. It's Chandler, I believe, reclassified to be a senior this year. Matthew, straightaway jumper on the way. In and out. And that one goes out of bounds on Tyson Yates. And Cease will check in. I think I think I think I like the substitution. Cease is a player. I, I like his when he was on the floor, he just disrupted Triton so much. And, I, and like Oregon Davis, they, they have that potential to play that pressure defense, you know, but can they do it for four quarters? Yeah, that's gonna be the uh, question because they don't have the, the depth that Triton does. So if they, it does turn into a run and gun type deal, Triton will be at the advantage there, both with foul issues and depth. I mean, simple as that. Matthews used that size, goes in, and Fisher knocks it out of bounds. So give Matthew some time. When the, the, those, like Center said, settle down. But that kid there, I mean, Matthew as a freshman, he's got a lot of potential here for Oregon Davis. Yeah, he's going to have a, he's going to have a very fun next three years. Connor Large in the corner to Shive with the update. Danford getting oh, closer wow. to him. Nice feed to Connor Large, and he'll go to the line for two. Nice feed by Cole Shively. It was so good, I don't even think Connor Large knew it was coming. Just ended up in his hands. Hey. I'll take it. Hammer action. Let me tell you, it's a beautiful thing. Connor Large is fits off the back iron too strong as Bruce Johnson will check in for Westaver. Also checking in will be David Weiger. Caden Graham checking in. Yeah, that's three on Matthew. He's going to sit till third quarter. There's a something on the fouls isn't quite right. Yeah. Because I thought that was four. Yes, yeah. and the total fouls is correct, but uh, the players isn't right We're somewhere. We're missing someone somewhere. Yes. Well, it's good. We got, the, we got Wes and Kevin next to us doing the stats. We can always check with them. Yep, see what they come up with. See the runner blocked by <laughs> Caden Graham. Ah, there's a perfect opportunity. What's my favorite part of basketball, Andy? Oh, it's the charge, man. I know. Nobody likes to charge better than Kate, I'm telling you. Oh. They're going to say a push off from Danford. And if it is, I think that's three on him. 22. Let's see what the board says here. Yep, three on yep. Danford. And the Trojans now being the double bonus. Hewitt checks in. For Danford, who's also going to sit till probably that third quarter. Triton, now with seeing Oregon Davis has two starters on the bench. Now's your time. You really want to step on the gas for this next minute and 18 seconds. Nice even by Taylor and Hewitt. Doubling up on Graham down low. Hewitt now in the corner. On top to Taylor. Works, with the, works away from the screen. Hesitation. Hard Ooh. screen there. Oh. Could have argued a moving screen. Taylor up off the mark. Tries to throw it off Oviedo, but Graham's there to intercept. Up uh, the floor to Yates, ah. but short of the mark, and Cease intercepts it. Nice job by Cease to track that one down. Taylor now in the corner. Hewitt on the elbow. He'll drive, kicks out. Taylor will, will try the dribble drive. I'm going to say foul before yep. the shot on the floor. If that's on Caden Graham, that's three. And looks like it is. We're going to see some free throws. So Taylor looks to get some more points here as they make their third trip to the free throw line here tonight. Haven't got one to connect on. But I'll tell you what, this Cameron Taylor, this kid's a 
I mean, this guy loves basketball. I mean, he he, he was a player that uh, when I saw the roster, I remembered him being a senior. This is a guy I remember. Yeah, I remember him last year. Him and uh, Lane Fisher, I believe, one had a great game in each of the two meetings between Triton and Oregon Davis. Taylor again. Hit on the first one. Can't quite connect on the second. 40 seconds now to go here in the first half. Triton leads by 24. McKinney working with Fisher. Oviedo, nice job by Fisher to step up and close off. Oviedo being able to dribble. He eats down the right wing. He'll drive. Steps up and under. Tries to go with the put back, but knocked out of bounds by Fisher. Fisher, I believe, has two foul or one foul. Or is he having, I thought he had two. He got three? Oh, oh, wait, no, that's our three. Oh, Never I was going to say. Bruce Johnson will try a three. Can't get that one in and out. Rebound goes to Weiger. Fisher pushing it now. Reset, 10 seconds to go up. Oh. And Taylor elevates as Weiger with the shot off the mark. Yates gets the rebound. Three seconds. Oh. And Johnson at the buzzer. Can't get it to go. Oh, I think say no got, shot. I think he got it off. But. I think he did. There's a lot of time in between that buzzer, and I, th I kind of thought time, but that'll do it for the first half. Triton leads 34-10. So Kenny gets the stats push over. You know, I just know it takes just a little bit of time to get it all to sink across. Seems like it's taking a little longer tonight than usual. usual. And the fouls, we do, get a, we do know that... Uh, Orn Oregon Davis fouls, there's a discrepancy somewhere, so we'll get that from our official stats here shortly. Uh, three. There we go. Okay, yep. Go ahead, Kenny. All right. Trojans at the free throw line made half of them, three of six. Oregon Davis got one of their six to drop. Two pointers, eight of 14, and three to 18 for Oregon Davis. Behind the arc, Triton hit five of the 13. Oregon Davis only got one. And unofficially, we have eight turnovers apiece for them. Uh, so for Ogren Davis, we got Taylor and Danford each with three, Fisher and Cece each with two. And like I say those fouls there, we got Matthews down as four, and uh, Danford is three, but we're going to get that double checked here at halftime. And then for the Trojans, Oviedo with all those threes there, got him up to 12 points, Shively with eight. Yates with six, and then Westifer McKinney and Graham and Johnson all with two. Uh, Graham's got uh, three fouls there, just picked up that last one here, and then we just got uh, Johnson and McKinney, Yates, Shively, and Oviedo all with a single. So that being said, we'll take a break here at halftime. We'll be back for the start of the third quarter right here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network. High school football fans, welcome back to Friday night to Pure Spirits. To pure sport. Welcome back to high school football. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is Friday night. This is Indiana high school football. This is your IHSAA. Hi high school football fans, welcome back to Friday night. To pure spirit. To pure sport. Welcome back to high school football. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is Friday night. This is Indiana high school football. This is your IHSAA. This is your IHSAA. This is your state. This is your high school. This is your athletic association. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and we're here to make sure that all of this remains yours. This is your state. This is your community. This is your IHSAA.
It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm Bob Lovell. This is our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. And Paul, here we are. High school football championships, as we talked about a year ago, uh, most of the games were played. And again, it's an amazing accomplishment for all of these teams to be where they are. And for you and the, and the membership of the IHSAA, it has been a fantastic fall sports season, culminating, obviously, in the championships at Lucas Oil Stadium. It has been, Bob. You know, it's just you, you you learn to be thankful for what we have through COVID. And, you know, you're thankful for health and you're thankful for, for being able to spend time with friends. And we've learned to be thankful about the, the time-honored tradition of participation in high school athletics. And, you know, and that's just what it just makes me just makes me smile and be a little sentimental, to be honest with you, about the fact that here we are. We get to do this. Kids get an opportunity to celebrate a state championship uh, or a runner-up uh, in front of their hometown crowd in a venue like Lucas Oil Stadium with a partner like the Colts. Well, it's really – it brings to bear, I think, a point that we lose sight of. You truly don't know what you have until you lose it. And then last year we didn't have fans. We didn't have the opportunity for fans to really be there. And, and it was a major, major impact because – you know, the concept of Friday Night Lights, we all understand it. It's real. It's extremely important. But it, it is made better by the involvement of communities and everybody in the schools. And there's there's nothing like it, quite frankly. There isn't. It, you know, and, I, you know, there's nothing like it even in other states. I mean, Indiana is such a special place um, with the, the you know, <laughs> I, I – I told somebody recently, they asked how we were able to do what we do in Indiana. And I said, well, I said, you don't have a governor who played high school basketball in the state of Indiana. And, you know, from the from the governor's office to Dr. Box to Dr. Katie Jenner to our schools, I mean, it's just a, it's a team thing and it's a team effort. And and, you know, that's why we have an opportunity to celebrate the state championship this weekend for kids in the communities. I like to say, Paul, the reason is only in Indiana. That's <laughs> right. That's right. It boils down to we're different when it comes to these kinds of things. And, and we are unique in so many things about what we do in terms of high school sports, starting with the Champions Network and uh, Indiana Sports Talk and all the other things. But you don't have that replicated in other sports, and I'm not sure you can. No, I agree with that. You know, I just saw a number yesterday. Our Champions Network on the radio side has expanded to 64 stations across the state of Indiana. We've grown over 20 stations in the last five years uh, in our network. And, uh, you know, I, I don't – you, you you don't speak about growth in a lot of formats, but our product no. our product and, and kids sport is so important that that stations all across Indiana want to hear what we have to say, but want to be able to support kids and participation. Finals Friday Saturday, uh, you have some interesting matchups. I think what's cool about it is we have some teams that fought for championships a year ago, and yet we also have some teams who've never been here before and have great stories. And so there are a whole lot of storylines coming up this weekend. There is. You know, we have three schools uh, that traditionally have very strong athletic programs, but they've never been to the state finals in football. And, you know, that comes a different level of excitement with the community. And those communities, they sign somebody to stay back home and turn the lights off when the last one leaves because they all they all come out. But then, you know, the Center Grove crowd and the Cathedral crowd, love their football, and, and they show up to support, too. And so I'm really excited about the atmosphere that we're going to have at uh, Lucas this week, this year. And, you know, the good thing, too, Coach, is that we don't, have to, we don't have to clear the facility out this year. So a fan can come on Friday or Saturday and watch all three games, and it's going to be a, an action-packed day of football both days. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community.
Last year, Friday nights were still game nights. But one thing was missing. You. This year, tickets to Friday night high school football are available again. And when you buy yours, you're buying so much more than a ticket. You're making a contribution to your community. That's because the proceeds from ticket and concession sales help fund your school's athletic department. That means you're helping provide transportation for the players. You're helping purchase new safety equipment. Most importantly, the game continues to get played. And the invaluable life lessons learned from high school sports will continue to be taught. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Nightingale. I just want to say welcome back and thanks for buying a ticket. The students and schools in your community deserve your support. This is high school football. This is Friday night. This is your IHSAA. Welcome back here to the den here in Oregon Davis High School as Triton leads 34-10. I'm Andrew O'Hara alongside the Hall of Famer Ryan Lindler, Cade Nackins, and Kenny Barnhart on the crew up here. You know, it, it's weird. I've been saying the Hall, I've been saying his name second through the whole like forever. I, I, we, we, we've got the A-team back together. I mean, I, I got to get better about this. Oh, well. Oh, well, we'll, we'll figure it out eventually. Hey, we did get, uh, speaking of getting stuff figured out, we did get the fouls figured out. Um, Matthew has three, and the one we missed was Caleb Cease. He's got the one. So that gets us to, they had uh, ten fouls in that first half. So, Caden, I mean, you're Oregon Davis. You're trailing by 24 here coming into this third quarter, and yet that first quarter you played extremely well. You got to build off of that. But what do you, if you're Coach Center, what are you telling your guys to kind of to be careful about and what to go do on the floor here to try to slow down this Trojan attack? Well, I know how easy it is to just go out there and say, all right, we got to start being aggressive again. Because you can't. You know, you've got two key guys in foul trouble. You can't go out there, guns are blazing, you know, getting after everybody. And I think that's going to stunt this Oregon Davis team a little bit. If they get in foul trouble and they've got no subs to turn to, there you could be in a world of hurt here in this second half. You know, in this in this Oregon Davis team, like I said, they're 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 on the, they're on the rise, and this is a group that if Center just keeps getting that program building, you know, he's a he's a good coach. He's going to get the most out of his players. They just got to really just kind of get more players and get that depth kind of build up. And like I said, this Oregon Davis is is, is a good program. It's like to see that program get back to where it was at. Yates, Oviedo, Shively, McKinney, Johnson, the five there for Triton, Taylor for three, banks it in. Well, there you go. That's a good way to get started for Oregon Davis. Danford, oh. Matthew, Fisher, and Cease the five out there. I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off there. No, you're all right. Yates now. Leaves it for McKinney. Oviedo running circles out there on top to Shively. Back to Oviedo. Three-pointer on the way. In and out. Oh. Yates with the offensive board. Puts it down. Goes up, travel. but I think a travel call. Yep. Good call there. Thank you. He dragged that pivot foot a little bit when he was starting to go up for it. But a good offensive board anyway. Yep. Matthew feeds it back to Taylor. Yep. Taylor will take off and he'll kind of shuffle those feet just a little bit. You know, talking about offensive board there. I think Tyson Yates is someone who is quick enough to where they can crash the board and still beat players back onto defense. You know, he's just, he's so quick, he's so versatile. He's got a wide range of abilities. You know, he's 5'11", but the kid plays like he's 6'4". Oviedo on the corner for three. Puts it in. 15 points for Ashton Oviedo. As a three-point, beyond the three-point line has belonged to him here tonight. Matthew. Good cut. Fisher thought about it, pulls it back. He'll try to drive, but he'll get fouled on the reach on the way through. I think it's going to be on Oviedo. Bruce Johnson appeared to be in pretty good position. Just Oviedo trying to get a, a cheap one real quick. Yep, so that's his second. Fisher inbounds. Tipped oh, by Oviedo. Oviedo. Oviedo read that well. Crossover up and reverse and breaks open. That was a thing of beauty from Ashton Oviedo. Crossover underneath the basket. <laughs> there ain't many people who can do that with ease like Ashton just did right there. Oh, man. Once this kid gets going, you can't turn him off. It's like the Energizer Bunny. He's just never going to run out of battery life. <laughs> Taylor in the corner. He'll drive and loses it through, but a foul call coming on Triton. They're going to call on Yates. Yates looks 
confused. Yep, that's his second. Perplexed. Perplexed is the then. word I wanted to use for Yates there. So the word of the game is perplexed. <laughs> Brought to you by the Tony Romo of High School Broadcasting. High School Sports Broadcasting, excuse me. Oviedo. Oh, my goodness. Look Just at the patience. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you, Steve Nash. <laughs> it's there. Vintage Steve Nash right there. You know what happened last night? You just add his <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> Addison Beers took over bragging rights on Ashton because she's got 34 career game high points now, and Ashton's 33. Oh. <laughs> Do you think that's kind of fueled the fire here? I mean, he's, I mean, he's got, the, <laughs> got a little ways to go yet. There's 17 points to tie it. But speaking of Ashton Oviedo on points, He's going to be hitting that 1,000 career mark here pretty soon. He's not too far away. What did we say it was 50? You said it earlier, Ryan. Oh, I got it right here. See, He's at 949 before this game started. So I needed 51 coming into it. He's got 17. I mean, how about 20? It's 20 oh, good? 20 sounds good. <laughs> yeah. You think Addison's getting worried at home? <laughs> well, she's here. Well, she's uh, here. She's down yeah. there. And why don't you text Kinsey to ask her if she's getting worried yet? <laughs> oh, Man, my. Let's talk about the girls' team for a little bit while we've got a second. You know, and, and they are so impressive. Yes, they went on that three-game losing streak, but, however, they faced some good teams. The Argus thing, that was a, that was a kind of a learning experience. Yeah. But this group here, you talk about a team that passes the ball well, moves, moves extremely well. The boxing out, the second chance points is my favorite thing of the season. These girls here get the board and go back up with it each yeah, time. It's, it's a girls team that it is unfamiliar to me. You know, it's it's rejuvenated. They've got life in them. They're playing defense. They want to play for each other. And I, it's something that yeah, is great for the Triton program, and it's going to be great moving forward. You know, and Coach Crawl has done a great job with this group. But the big thing for me is, like, I can hear these girls in my headset talking what to do on the floor. Yates yeah. is directing traffic. Kinsey's talking out there. Addison's building up her teammates. I mean, Emily Bug now coming off the floor talking. You know, Jolie Groves out there playing extremely well. And then Jocelyn Falker also rebounding well. I mean, there's girls all over the place there that are playing extremely well. I mean, these girls, this, this, is, this is a team to keep an eye on. Yeah. They're, they're playing extremely well, and they're out-rebounding opponents yeah. by a high rate. That should be a fun season for these girls. Looking forward to it. So, you said we get to 30. As you might have seen in that JV game, if you pay attention, there's a new rule implemented this year, kind of basically the mercy rule. It's 35-point spread. There'll be a running clock. So, we was there at 30, and then... Down to 28. And for those who don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, Kenny, but it, if a team scores... Like, if they're up by 35 at any point in the game, it's yes. continuous. Yes. No yes. matter. Yep. It, it does not go back it, and stop. It yeah. is once it starts, it, you don't stop it. The only time it does stop is timeouts. And uh, I think and, it gets under a, yeah, and it gets under a minute. That I think it's maybe a little more. -ish. So, Yates inbound. Cash and Swanson checking in on that last dead ball. I have to have the timeout, and Carson Matthew comes out as Weiger checks in for him. Yeah, because he picked up his fourth foul then. Down oh, wow. the eights, good ball movement goes up and gets and the end one opportunity. <laughs> That's going to be on Fisher, so that'll be th th three, three on him. Three. So three key players for the Bobcats with three fouls or more. And Yates off the front iron. And Fisher wins the battle on the boards on that trip. That Trojan's not doing Good feed great. to Taylor Banks open. That was a thing of beauty from Fisher to Taylor. Go ahead, Kenny. Well, I say the Trojans only hitting four or nine free throws, so that's something there they need to work on. Yates puts that one in. So the woes from the JV game seem, yes. to, seem yes. to carry over in this one. Foul on Shively. Hand check. Mm. That's going to be his second, team's third. Danford's going to go to inbound. Johnson was ready. 
Fisher called it a smile on his face. <laughs> he wanted that one bad. Taylor. Wow. Spin move. Nice ball. Nice dribbling move to Watson there as Yates takes off in the fast break. Patient up the left yep. hand and in. Yates has got 12. Morgan Davis working around the top. Fisher with the ball fake. Down to Taylor, and then <laughs> oh. he collides with Danford. Danford on the ground. Weiger tries to get onto Oviedo, spins oh. it away. Swanson's there, and he loses the basketball. <laughs> Con the left wing on top to Fisher. Straight away, three on its way. Puts it in. Lane Fisher with some nice plays here in this third quarter. We saw a nice assist as Oviedo answer, tries to answer right back. Shively tries to win the rebound battle, but he goes out of bounds. Tell you what, I think Morgan someone gets soaked back. that ball in butter there on that last <laughs> possession. No Man. one could get a hold of it. I think everybody touched it. Yeah. I mean, that ball Whether that was on purpose or not. I, I, I don't <laughs> know. Connor Large, Caden Graham, and Chandler West ever checks in. Oviedo, Shively, and Johnson comes out. <laughs> Cashton Swanson brings it up. One-handed pass on over to Fisher. This is his dribble. To Weiger, who loses it, but Connor Large is there to take it away. Yeah, Tries to go through and yeah, gets wrapped yeah, up. That's got to be a foul or something. Foul jump ball, they're going to call it. Center one have a quick word with Fisher as he meets him at half court. You know, I I, I think you can tell Larry, just, just tell him that, that that coach's box is just merely a suggestion. <laughs> yeah. I kind love of the I, general area. I love watching Coach Center <laughs> coach. I mean, that man is involved. I love it. Yates finds a way through, slithers his way in for two. Coach Center, he was thinking the same thing I was. <laughs> I looked down as soon as that basket went in. He said, someone take a charge. <laughs> I mean, Yates is going through there like a freight train, and Dan for going to throw one the up. range, couldn't quite get that one to go. McKinney in transition. No look pass, finds Westward out to Graham in the corner for three on its way, puts it in. Caden Graham. And they're gonna call a taunt. Oh, they're gonna have a quick word as Fisher and Graham having words back and forth. And the coach is now gonna have a word as Fisher and Graham are John at one another. And I think they're still talking. It was, then, as the official said, I warned him. Coaches seem to just laugh it off. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're just down there <laughs> laughing it off. There's just yeah. two yeah, boys just being confetti. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, both, <laughs> then, yeah both, uh, both of the coaches are just. <laughs> hey, they're just boys talking. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's Wesser down there talking to Fisher. Now they're just having a conversation. <laughs> hey, boys will be boys is what I think that conversation was there at half court there. They're just having fun talking. Fisher nope. tries to set a moving screen, uh, and they're going to get in there. That'll yeah. be four on him. That one, that one looks a little premeditated. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he wanted that screen bad. I don't know if that screen had anything to do with uh, <laughs> what just took place earlier. but McKinney goes to inbounds. Yeah, Fisher comes out with four fouls. McKinney's like, uh, where do I go stand? I want the ball. Let's go. Uh, center having a long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So one point away from the running clock. Triton has a chance to set it here. The Cease will check in. Swanson out there with Taylor, Danford, and Weiger. Oh, Backdoor cut, cut for Graham. Back to Yates on the right wing. He'll drive all the way through. Feeds oh. Connor Large, and the bank is open. And the running clock will start as Connor Large gets the nice feed from Tyson Yates. Who else but Connor Large? Yep. Taylor tries to dig back into that one. Yates gets the rebound, knocked away. Weiger's got it. Tries to go back down to Taylor, and he'll lose it. And the clock, as we said, will run. Yep. And as Fisher checks back in, a chance to cool off. As he gets adjusted. you got to be careful with that four fouls. Yates brings it up. Works back here, finds McKinney on the 
left elbow. Out to West Haver. Works with the screen. And nice job by Danford to stop Chandler West making him pick up his dribble. West Haver gets Fisher to leave his feet. Nice feed down to Connor Large, and he'll go to the line for two. This is a good feed by West Haver down low. Patience there, letting Danford get him to leave his feet. Yeah, that was just good ball movement, that whole possession. You know, I think three or four guys touched the ball there, and they were each good passes and led to a foul. You can't ask for much more than that. So we'll see if Connor can redeem himself. There he goes. Finally got his first of the third, first of the three attempts. And Oviedo back in the ball game. Connor Large to go again here. Clock does stop for free throws. So you guys doubted me. I told I I read the rule. I read it when it first came out, but that's been well, that's, a few moons ago. Yeah, I, I reread <laughs> to double check myself the other night, but hey. Taylor for three from the right wing. Can't get that one to go shively with the rebound. Oh, Caden Graham, Graham down Graham the floor. It. Shively's going to go coast to coast. Kicks it back oh, to yeah. Connor Large oh, up yeah. and in, and he'll draw the foul and go right back to the line. Man, oh, man. Did you see that Red Sea part? It part and, and, you know, Connor Large just saw, hey, if your guys aren't going to be there, I know where I'm going. <laughs> he had a one-way track. He knew where he was going. It'd be interesting to know which team can get to a 35-point spread the quickest. Quickest in a game. But it'd be kind of hard to track that without. <laughs> well, hey, you know, John Harrell, this could be a new thing for them to keep track of. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just you'd throwing to, it out there. i got to throw out my favorite stat. You'd favorite. have to take stats like Wes does to know. Them. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. Or watch the game. Watch or listen, something. Connor Large. Is that free throw to go? Get our clock fixed here. The camera slid a little bit on us. Danford works on the right wing, leaves it for Cease. Cease with the runner, bank is closed, rebound to Shively again. And Cole Shively cleaning the glass well in this one. Up high to Caden Graham. Danford's going to come out on him as Graham will let his offense get down there with him. Up on top to Shively. Jab step. He'll go left here. Gets caught, goes back to West Haver. Connor Large on the right wing, feeds Graham down low. Graham goes up. Nice yes. move by Caden Graham. Uses those long arms and scoops that one up and in. Hey, we got it sent to us. The clock will only stop for five reasons. If there's an injury timeout, a charged team timeout, intermission between the third and fourth quarters, any time a foul is called and it results in a free throw, any time officials deem it necessary for safety reasons. So my tech support from home. There you go. <laughs> Senate. it. Oh, he does just run around. <laughs> nice. Hewitt will check in for Danford. They don't get... They're still young, I mean, and everybody down there, I don't know yeah. if everybody knows the rule. New rule. Everyone's still learning about it. Because they got four, three. Going to have to get it up. Nope. Hewitt will get up at the nope. buzzer, but off the mark. And that'll do it for the third quarter as Triton leads 61 to 20 here. Thirteen times last season the Trojans got past the 60-point mark. Ah. One yeah. of those times getting the game that we didn't get to see because we were calling the regional championship. Oh. No, was, right. what was, what was the, it was the time they went up over the century mark against Clinton Christian. Mm -hmm. That was the, uh, the missed dunk opportunity. Oh, yes. Yes. As like we said, as Kenny will throw up the schedule there. Uh, let's see what you think we got it added. Nope, that's girl. Nope. Nope. What's that? Yeah, the roster looks like. Well, anyways, I'll just start reading it. Yeah, that may be one of the graphics they don't have added yet. So starting on November 30th, oh, Triton yeah. will start a five-game homestand against Plymouth Northwood, Lakeland Christian, Pioneer, and Bethany Christian. 
And we'll have a two game against Winnemac and Logan Sport, host Glenn, Culver, then by County. Then they'll host at home again, three game stand with Elkar, Christian, Judson, and Argus. Be away at Cass, and then another three game home stand with Trinity, Greenlawn, LaVille, and Rochester. Then they'll be at Valley and Bremen and close up the season at home against Knox. And then sectionals are at Triton, and so are regionals. All right. So it'll be here before we know it. Before we know it, you know it's nice. I, I can walk. I can walk to sectionals this year. That's right. I like it. I, uh, I probably could too, but it might take me eight or nine, twelve days, something like that. Yeah, you'll get there eventually. <laughs> Cole McKinney. Mm -hmm. Yep, and can't get, get that one. Matthew with the rebound pushes it up, and Yates reaches out and takes it. Yates hits the turbo <laughs> button, goes up and in. Right there, one, two, and he is gone. Fastest first step this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, baseline jumper, gets it to go. That gets him double digits, 10 points, leading Oregon Davis. Yates drives, kicks out. Bruce Johnson will try a three. Can't get that one. Side iron, no good. Fisher with the rebound. Fisher drives, don't look pass. Ooh. Wire couldn't quite corral it. Yates drives, goes up, draws the foul, and gets the roll. Tyson Yates, the circus is in town. The circus shots by him tonight. These, these Trojans, the circus shots. My goodness. Wow. I wonder if that was something they worked on this summer. You know, the Trojans were Super Hoops champions uh, yes, they were. this summer at Indiana Wesleyan. Tell you what, that's a fun experience going to any Westland. Just you're playing games the whole time you're down yeah. there that whole weekend. Yeah, I was down there with Travis there for one of those days, and yeah, in and out of gyms and back and forth and quick games and little break and. Ooh. Weiger with now in the corner. Down to Matthew. He'll reach right over top of McKinney. Can't get that one to go. McKinney gets the rebound. Nice job using <laughs> got Weiger to come against him. Cole Shively swings it to Johnson. He's on the left wing. Works with the screen right. Back to Oviedo. Oviedo drives. No look pass. McKinney up and in. Sounded like you were questioning that one at the end. <laughs> I got that, that little hesitation on the roll. About got me. Fisher steps into a three. Can't get that one to go. Yates the rebound. Up to Johnson. Fisher gets there in time. Feeds Yates up and no good. Matthew with the rebound. Pushes it up to Fisher. Oviedo tries Ooh. to go two on one fast break. Taylor back to Fisher. Knocked away by McKinney. And Fisher trying to reach up on underneath. Yates goes through. Charge. and They're going to be a charge call. Yeah. Wire got there and got position. Yeah, that's a great call by the officials. It might have been a little bit of a left shoulder dip by Yates on the way through. I think that really kind of sealed it there. And here comes the hockey substitutions. Platoon swap. <laughs> Evan Bryles, Javen May, Chandler Westover, Caden Graham, and Connor Large as the Trojan starters come off the floor. Now you say about got out of this homestand, but those are going to be some really tough, tough matchups. There's some, there's some tough games there. That Northwood and that Plymouth game. Down to Matthew, but yep. Fisher setting it up well. Just couldn't quite finish it off. And hosting Glenn. I thought that had been away this year. Um, I'm not sure if it got messed up last year with Glenn's yeah, uh, gym the, the being gym. done and COVID. And yep. I'm looking forward to that. One. Uh, that, that, was, was, that was a fun game to call. That first game was a very fun game. Yes, it was. I think there was 12 timeouts called in the last 30 seconds of the game. Oh, there you go. A little okay. delayed there. Fisher draws a charge on Caden Graham. That's his fourth. Yeah, didn't we play at Glenn in the regular season and we had to No, we played at home. No, we home. played at home. It was both it was time two home. home. Yep. Two home games. I had to look at that again because I thought, I thought we'd be away up there this year. And, yeah. their, and their gym is really nice. We got to see during the girls game. Yeah, and I was there for the volleyball season as well. That uh, it's brand spanking new, let me tell you. It's beautiful in there. It is, it is gorgeous in there. Fisher now in the corner. He'll drive in the baseline. Goes up the runner. Can't get that one to go. Matthew tips it, but I believe Javen May knocks it out of bounds. 
JV also won the night 57 to 14. So they started off well. They moved the ball extremely well. Just like I said, big thing for me is I start hitting those free throws. Yep. Uh, if they can polish up those free throws, that JV team, I think they're going to be a tough one to beat. Some good young talent for the Trojans. Cease up and in. Nice move there. Let's save her now. Hill drive, stops, kicks back to Connor Large. To Evan Bryles, deep two. Evan Bryles connects. No, I, I have that we're at John Glenn. Well, I'm going, see, that's what I wondered, because that's John's coming off John Harrell. Fisher, corner three, no good. Rebound, Connor Large, and Large is met by a wall there. Weiger, he planted his feet and said, no, you're not going through here. Ooh. Up, Bryles again, put back. Second chance points there for Evan Bryles. Dante Workman looks to check in here. Next dead ball. Taylor is up and in. West Haver now. Works with the screen left straight away. Thought Ooh. about it. Graham and Fisher, here we go. Round two, Fisher can't win this one as Graham scoops it up and in. It's turning into a uh, <laughs> must-see TV. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to possible bi-county and sexual <laughs> matchup here. Matthew with the left hand, can't get that one to go. Good defense by Bryles. Yeah, Bryles just straight up. Oh, Javen May has it now. Right Connor, Connor Large drives with authority. The give and go. When I say with authority, Connor Large put that ball down, and he went, and I, he knew where he was going. Javon May with a nice feet. Taylor now. Matthew trying to get position on Bryles. He'll drive. Matthew kicks out. Cease for three. Can't get that one to go with the front iron, and that one knocked out of bounds. It's going to be say blue Taylor. ball. Jacob Pitney checking in for Caden Graham. Dante Workman checking in for Connor Large. Weiger checks in. The freshman Dante Workman. The freshman Dante Workman. We I saw. believe the lone yep. freshman on the yes. varsity roster. We saw him have a very good football season as freshman. So, And I'm telling you, Dante Workman, he is a special player, not just because of ability, but this kid here, he puts the work in. He's got the work ethic. And he's and he's got the smarts to be a talented player down the road. He's going to be a, he's going to be a lot of fun to watch the next few years. That one and up and in. Speaking of workmen, first varsity points. You can hear his mom down there yelling. She liked that one. Taylor goes up, draws the foul, and the clock will stop for free throws. As Hewitt and Danford look to check in, as Taylor will go to the line. See, boys play at Glenn this year, so John Harrell's got it wrong. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I thought. I'll let him know. <laughs> yeah, you let, you let him know. You, you, you take care of that. I sent him this roster, or the schedule. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just reading what this is. What it said. I'm I copied <laughs> and I pasted it to my page right here. Did you get last year's? No. <laughs> last year's has scores next to it. See, that's why I had to do a double take. Yep. You want to read it just just to confirm? Oh, I believe you. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm just saying. You need to go to my schedules and not his. Well, tell, <laughs> you know what? Maybe make yours a little easier to copy and paste so I can put all my thing. Well, then we'll, we'll talk. Pit me off the front okay. iron. I got the brothers arguing up here. That's just what we need. Oh boy, Danford. I'm working against Workman now. Lisa right. for Cease. Under a minute. In the corner, Wire Hill Drive. Back to Hewitt. Nice ball movement by the Bobcats. Yep. Cease puts it in. The Trojans are going to start off strong with a 1-0 record. This Oregon Davis team, this is a team. Give these guys some time to grow and get, get some of that agility build up. They'll be a different team come uh, sectional time. They'll be a little bit more polished offensively, be able to work the ball a little better. And I could see them winning a couple games in that sectional. Workman in the oh. corner of Javen May, and that one goes out of bounds, but the clock continues to run. And that's going to do it here from the Bobcat Den. 
as Triton wins their opening game. And Stanford's going to try to get one up, but the buzzer will step from beyond the attack line. That one's short of the mark, and that'll do it. 78-28, to 28, Triton wins. Am I getting a microphone ready? Oh, you know, I didn't think about that. Sure, why not? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending tonight's match. You don't have your score. You have your score. Our next action here in the Bobcat game is this Saturday, November 27th. Yeah, they didn't score. It should be 38 28. 28 78, I thought was the score. 28 78. Yes. Yeah, no, it's 30. All right, there's got the free throws up, uh, 8 of 14. Trojan shot to 57% and 25% for Oregon Davis. Two pointers, 42%, for 22% for Oregon Davis. And two pointers, those 23 of 33, 70%, 8 of 29, 28% for Oregon Davis. Taylor left, uh, led the way there with 13 points. Fisher and CC with seven, and Danford with three. For the Trojans, Oviedo there with all those uh, th threes he knocked down, got 20 points. Yates started running in behind him, got 19. Graham and Shively each with nine. Large with seven. McKinney and Bryles each with four. Westifer, Workman, and Johnson all with two. So with that, that we're getting set up here. Try to get an interview with the coach after this. All right. All right, welcome back. We got Coach Groves. Not a bad way to start off the, the season against Oregon Davis, Coach. No, you know, I liked our energy. I liked our focus coming out. You know, we talked about really getting better from the Peru scrimmage, and there were some things we needed to clean up a little bit. thought we did a better job of that tonight. You know, kind of a slow start, but, you know, OD plays hard. I told our kids they're going to come after you, they're going to get after you, which they did. And, you know, once we adjusted, I thought we, we played well on both ends of the court. And watch these guys here. Like, the one thing we always like last year for me was the platoon swap. I mean, you're able to go quite a bit deep in that bench, and that really showed off here tonight where you could just bring guys in when anytime you wanted to. Definitely. You know, that was kind of nice. You know, I thought those guys came in and played really well, too. You know, I complimented um, a couple of them at halftime, and, you know, they came in, you know, they got some rebounds, they took care of the ball, they defended, you know, and so that's kind of what we want out of those guys coming off the bench is, you know, just come in and be solid, and I thought they, they did a great job of that tonight and kind of revealed our depth, and we got some scoring from some other kids, so that yeah, was nice to see as well. And then sitting there and watching them, for me, that ball movement tonight, the guys, like Peru, it was, it was kind of a, bit, a little bit sloppy at times, but yet they really dialed in. This team can move the ball extremely well. Yeah, and that's that's the main thing we talked about before the game is is movement. I, you know, if you guys, you know, play with each other, for each other, move the ball, 
get player movement, not just ball movement, but player movement. I thought in, against Peru was a little sluggish too. And so I thought much better today. And when they do that, they're going to be hard to beat. Absolutely. So, Coach, getting ready to go out and start like a five-game homestand here. What kind of things you guys will be working on to get ready for the next one? Well, you know, it's just a little bit of everything. I mean, obviously, defensively, you know, we, we it, last week it was being able to just stop, get back in transition and stop the ball. Yeah. You know, tonight I saw a little bit of it, you know, where we'd come up, they'd get a rebound. We have three guys fly to the ball, and they'd go past us and, and get an easy bucket. And so transition defense, I think, is, is one thing. Um, also defensively, just our, our angles and our man-to-man, -man, our one-on-one -on -one defense. When your guy has the ball, just you know, being able to angle to the sideline and keep the guys in front of us. Offensively, just a little bit of everything. I mean, it's just you know, like you said, moving the ball. I think we could maybe incorporate a little bit more screening within the offense. You know, once we get that those hard cuts and that player movement, incorporate that. And so, you know, those are the things we're going to look to improve upon. Well, this is a hard working group too. I mean, talk to these boys. These guys were working all summer long. They were working in the off time. We put in, they were putting in time as a group, just working together. I mean. This is a group that they want to put the work in and they, they want to be a better team. Definitely. You know, I, I, it was funny because I had a former player text me, I think it was yesterday, and just, you know, um, kind of wished me luck in this game and you know, was talking about it. And, you know, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, a little bit worried. OD plays hard, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know what? You have a good group of kids that work hard. They enjoy playing basketball. They play well together. I don't think you have to worry, coach. And, you know, I was and it kind of, you know, I, I stopped and thought about that after a while. And that's what we have. We have kids that work at it. They want to get better at it. Um, they put the time in and it shows. I mean, when you, you shoot the way, you know, Ashton does and when he, he puts in the time, you know. So if you want to be a good shooter, go out there and practice, work at it, put the time in because that's something you can you can learn. And so, um, you know, it's, they're just good examples for, you know, kids who want to be good at basketball. So that being said, we'll get, be next up next. We'll have Plymouth up next, next I believe, next week. So with that being said, Andrew Hare for Coach Groves, Cade Atkins, Kenny Barnhart, and the Hall of Famer O'Reilly. Until next time, Trojan fans, remember the Trojan way.